Okay. So just to kind of go through this week, we're going to be talking about, um, we're going to be kind of getting more into the game content. Um, the topic this week is goals and genre, genres of games. And this, um, basically the subtitle is what are the possibilities? So this week we've got a discussion post um, in the chapter. It'll be talking about strategy games. Um, and basically the, um, strat the discussion is... wait for them to finish joining. Okay, um, the discussion is basically um, based on talking about strategy games. And the question, the post is basically going to be about strategy games don't always need to be need a military back backdrop, discuss three settings or scenarios not related to the military that could be incorporated into incorporated successfully into a strategy game. So again, just, you know, our typical discussion. Um, this week we have another assignment. Um, the assignment has basically talking. You're going to be talking about non non entertainment game goals, and um, kind of just looking through the different genres and stuff. And then of course there's the quiz that kind of goes along with the reading. Um, since in week one it touched upon the ESRB, and I believe we talk about it a little bit more. Um, I also posted a very interesting video from um, a YouTube channel called the Gaming Historian. And it kind of gives the story of the ESRB and how, how um, after the big Senate hearings about the violence and stuff in video games, how how the ESRB, ESRB came about, and it, um, it it's just a very interesting story story in the backdrop about it. So um, it's something that's I just posted out there since we have touched a little bit about the um, ESRB. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, we've got a couple more that are coming, but I'm recording and I still have to post last week's recording too. So um, with that, we'll kind of get to the discussion or the lecture, I should say. Um, so this week's chapter, um, again, we're talking about goals and genres and what are the possibilities? So some of the key things that um, the chapter is going to be talking about is, is one of the things it's going to talk about in the chapter is what are, what are not some non-entertainment goals associated with game development? A lot of times um, the main goal of games is, is entertainment, but not always. And there are some non-entertainment goals that can be out there. Um, and then the chapter talks about popular game genres and, and the characteristics associated with those game genres. Um, and then it goes into a little bit about when you sit there and you take the goals that we talked about that, that discusses and the genre, genres it discusses, it's um, kind of says what, you know, talks about which, which ones work together, what, you know, better, what work to work well together or work um, better that, together than other others. Um, and then it kind of goes in the chapter will go into specific game content that is traditionally associated with the different genres. And then um, finally, it kind of goes into the last little topic of genre hybrids and new types of genres changing um, and how they change the way genres are category, categorized. Because again, um, with any kind of classification and, and um, classification of like video game types and stuff, there's always going to be some sort of hybrid model that ends up coming out of it. You may have, you may have one main goal or you may have one main um, type of game you're creating, but there could always be a hybrid where, where it may be a mixture of the two. So when we sit there and um, talking about goals, wait again, because we have one more joining. So talking about, talking about goals, um, one of the first goals in video games is obviously is entertainment. And again, here it uses the example of Uncharted 2 and obviously there's Uncharted 3 and Uncharted 4 that are out now. But um, the entertainment goals, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. It's, it's games that are meant to entertain you. They're, they're developed to entertain you. Um, to, you're, you're, they're made to have fun. It's, it's, you know, they may have different sub goals and different things like that, but the main goal of the game is entertainment. Why am 
I going the wrong way? So the second type of goal is um, more so your social games. And again, um, this is kind of where you already can start seeing um, a hybrid of goals. It, it, you know, um, a lot of the social games are, all, are, are also entertaining, but the, the goals of the social games is basically they're multiplayer games meant to develop um, social interaction. And, you know, at the time the book was written, I mean, you had um, the big social game at the time was, you know, Farmville, if anybody even remembers that um, now. But there was also, um, you know, with, with the advent of Facebook and, and Facebook games and even with mobile games, you have, there, there still is more of a social, like more and more of the games that are built to be played on platforms like Facebook or even um, even some of the games, there's games that are built in that are meant to be played on, um, you know, using Microsoft Teams or using, um, you know, integrate that will integrate with Zoom even that have a social aspect to social aspect to them. Um, I mean, it could be, you know, just fun card games like, um, you know, like Uno or even certain aspects of um, how Call of Duty integrates where you can have the online multiplayer and you could have where um, if you've got the headsets where you can have the um, interaction with each other as you're playing. I mean, that's kind of, you know, the main goal of the game isn't social, but it still has a so social aspect to it. So um, as we get more um, in society to where we tend more towards the social media things and just everything being more online social, a lot of the games are starting to gear towards towards that social aspect um, in some way or form. Um, another goal is educational. So um, obviously there was the, you know, Oregon Trail and, and all its aspects of it where, you know, you basically tried to get across the country without getting dysentery, dying of dysentery. You know, there, there was different educational games. Um, I remember all the way back, um, back when I was, when I was in middle school, which, you know, yes, there were computers at that time, you know, we, we didn't just use Abacus, but um, remember we had um, in our one math class, if, if we did well in, in um, algebra all week, we, we got to play a, um, shared game lemonade stand that was, you know, text based. It was, it ran off a, a shared floppy disk and everybody had to wait their turn for their computer to read off that shared floppy drive. But it was a goal, you know, doing well, that was a good reward to be able to play that game um, on a Friday, you know, um, just different, different things we did. But there's, you know, games that have education, educational goals, whether it be to ed educate you about specific history or different things like that, or um, they have, you know, games that are meant to, you know, there's a lot of games now that are meant towards supposedly determining your brain age or doing training to, to help your, help your um, mental aspect and help you do, um, to do training, like to do different things. And like a lot of these educational games they fall into a category kind of, of of serious games and some of these more serious games that are created for non-educational purposes are made you know they're made to um work with business medicine education um sometimes in the in the you know the government will use them for educating on stuff um but basically these these kind of the goal isn't so much entertainment the goal is education and a lot of times like um the buzzword in, in the education industry is trying to, a lot of, a lot of instructors try to gamify their class. They try to, to add some sort of game aspect to the teaching because it's, it's number one, if you're sitting there and you're playing a game, sometimes you may not even realize you're learning new things as you're going along playing it. But number two, it, it makes learning a little bit more interesting, a little bit more fun. You know, it, may, it makes it work, work a little bit better. Um, sometimes, sometimes games are, um, oh yeah, well, kind of going back to the educational, um, one of the things the chapter talks about is, talks about adapting games for learning, learning, um, things to do, um, to adapt games to more for learning. And it's, um, one of the things it talks about is, um, you know, basically creating strong identities that le learners can create or inhabit. So if you're creating a game that's um, geared towards learning, learning specific science, science, 
allow the character to be a certain type of scientist you know if, if it, you know depending on the type again depending on the type of the game if the game's trying to te teach biology maybe give the option to be a a microbiologist or or um you know some sort of um you know immuno you know in this day and age an immunologist and, and different things like that um you know, one of the things you want to pay attention to is making making sure that the game has immersive experiences that that allow you allow people who, by getting immersed into that into that experience, it makes it more natural for them to learn, for them to learn because they're more immersed to it. They've got um, more invested in it. And when you sit there and going through doing it, you want to make sure that your um, your problem spaces, your problems are well organized, because if you're sitting there and you're trying to teach, teach, um, teach skills through, pro teach something through problem solving and the problems you have don't go in the specific order that, that makes the most sense. Um, the problem solving isn't really going to be educational out of it. And those are kind of like some key big points that the book makes about educational games. So going back into it. So one of the thing, one another goal that um, could be used for um, games, gaming is believe it or not for recruitment and training. Um, obviously, um, training, you can use it for virtual training. I know, um, back in March, when when, you know, the world shut down, you had students from SPC that are enrolled in the nursing program, and they were, you know, pulled pulled from their clinicals within the hospital where they were learning their learning needed nursing skills and pulled into simulation labs um you know to do to to learn the needed material learn the needed material to be able to continue their goals towards um becoming nurses um a lot of companies will use you know certain types of games to to um to recruit people in you know, recruit people as potential employees or, or possibly recruit them, you know, just recruit them as customers, even. Um, it's a, you know, it's a type of goal they have. Um, one of the goals, especially back in the day when you had the, the Wii was um, health and fitness. You had Wii, you know, Nintendo came out with the Wii Fit and they had other games, other games that came out that went through that took advantage of the motion activation of the Wii to be able to um, get people moving more. I mean, it, it's funny, one of the biggest, um, and I still think they still have, you know, a pretty big um, buy-in on it. One of the biggest, um, I know back when the Wii first came out, one of the biggest consumers of the Wii was not, you know, families and stuff, but it was nursing homes because nursing homes found that simple games like the Wii bowling was something that a lot of their residents liked and it was stuff to get them to get them moving and get them interested in, in doing activities and not just wanting to, you know, lay around in a bed and, and be old, you know, be, I mean, I don't know how else to put that. That was kind of wrong, but you know, it was, it was, it, it was a goal of using games that had the goal of health and fitness to encourage people to do stuff, to, to extend their health and, and get maybe help with help them with their fitness and get them moving. Sometimes there's games that, um, the goal of the game is to increase consciousness or, or encourage change. Um, again, you know, in our world today, there's, there's a lot of things that people are doing to try to implement change, implement change. And there's ways um, later and later on, later on, we'll kind of talk about this a little bit more, but later on, there's, there's an example. I have a, um, a, a Ted talks video that I've, um, put in the class before where, where the speaker um, is someone who works for works for a company that, that basically uses games that they that they design their games to where um, they're online based games, and they're designed in a way for to to essentially have gamers go through and play them and help them solve world problems or, or, um, you know, find different ways to implement change, you know, again, gaming doesn't, you know, there can be an entertainment factor to it, but in, in, in entertaining them, you can increase consciousness about a, a particular issue or even use it to, to p change people's thought about that issue. Um, sometimes games are just created to, um, for the aesthetics and to encourage creativity. 
you know, there's, there's games that have no meaning other than to just sit there and kind of relax you, maybe allow you to draw or create interesting, you know, doodles and, and stuff like that. And it's just, you know, the goals are exactly that just to, um, they're just created for the, for the aesthetics, for the, for the, to be pleasing to the eye and to, to encourage creativity. And then of course there um, is the all also um, ever powerful games that where the goal is marketing and advertising. So you don't, I mean, I don't know that I see as many much of this now because I just see more things of marketing and advertising um, as in in app and in game ads. But you know, there was a per period of time where if you had you know if Pepsi was releasing a new product or Pepsi was just trying to, um, you know, as, as it shows in the example here, Pepsi using the, um, using the popularity of, of rock band and guitar hero or not. Yeah. It was using games like that to, to promote Pepsi and creating a game sitting here and saying, Oh, Pepsi, Pepsi gave me a way to where I can, you know, I can play this online for free and, you know, be kind of cool like that. And, it's a way to promote, um, you know, promote your product where it's all, in, you know, you've developed this simple little game that kind of gets people thinking, you know, possibly gets people thinking when they go to the store, it's like, hey, I played that cool game by Pepsi. I, you know, I kind of want some now. You know, it, it was just a way of using, using simple games for marketing and advertising that, you know, you know, the goal, the whole, the everything of every 100% of the game was all about advertising that particular product to you. So moving on from goals, moving on from the goals, let me make sure there isn't any little gap. So moving on from the goals, um, we talk about the genres. So the first major, major genre that, you know, is out there is your, your action genre. And underneath, um, and action is kind of, um, it's one of the ones that's been around for a while because you have, um, you know, I mean, basically, when you sit there, action, the action genre was or has been around since the arcade days, you know, most of the arcade games were were action type games. And just because of the limitations of the platforms, um, a lot of them were platformers, you know, where you sit there and you look, um, I mean, plat the, the, you know, the platformer game has kind of made a, a comeback recently with the with the whole retro, you know, movement and everything. But, you know, it's part of that subgenre of of action games that fits. Um, then under the action games, you've got shooters. So you've got your Call of Duty, your Gears of Wars. You know, basically those are your first person or your third person third person shooters. Um, the goal of the you know the goal of these games um, is to walk around shooting up people, and you know, the shooter is you know it's an action game and it's focuses on focuses focuses mainly on the combat. So your next type of um, action, you know, thing under game under the action genre is your racing games. And racing is kind of one of those ones where, where depending on the type of racing, it could fit under the action genre or it could get moved into, you know, um, the simulation genre, genre or, or, or the other ones. It's one of those ones where depending on the type of game, it falls under several bigger genre types um, as well as fighting. When you sit there and you look, you can sit there and fighting is also another one that it's, it, it is an action, action type game, but depending on the type of fighting that's going on, um, you know, back the early fighting games, like your, um, your um, games like your early games like Streets of Rage and stuff like that. Um, while it was fighting, it also played more like a platformer. You know, there there's different things. You know, where you're sitting here, you're talking um, fighting games like UFC or or even boxing games. Yeah, that kind of falls under a action, but again, it's also you know sporting or it could be simulation even because there are simulation aspects to it. So as you see with the genres, you're kind of seeing why the chapter closes out with a discussion about the hybrids of things. So then your next genre is um, adventure and your action games are, you know, 
games that that games that kind of they involve a lot of action. Um, there's a lot of technically there's a lot of simplicity sometimes um, because and the reason there's a simplicity is is with the action it's more focused on the player reaction more fo focused on your reaction time than than maybe maybe you know thinking through it's 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 move and react move and react whereas moving into the next major level ma leisure, uh, level um major genre level of adventure adventures are more about um going through going on a quest wandering around going on and it, you know, trying not to use the title, but going on an adventure uh, of some sorts. So, and of course, as you're going through, um, talking about the next genre, you have, you know, one of the hybrids, an action adventure genre, where you're going on an adventure, you're going on a quest, um, but that quest, as you're going through the quest, leads to scenarios where you have those action components that require you know while you may be thinking about okay where do i go where do i go next as you're going through the journey you're going to hit certain points where you where it requires that that action component where you need to have that quick quick reflective think reflexive thinking and be able to react to different things you know whether it be a you know um encountering an enemy and you know going on a quest and encountering an enemy that's trying to stop you so you have to fight that enemy and then you continue on your quest So the next type of genre, you know, major part of genres is um, your casino games. And I mean, this is kind of a pretty self-explanatory topic. These are the games where you're sitting there and um, they're essentially casino simulations. There's a lot of ones that are out there that are, um, you know, slot machines. There's, po there, you know, there's the poker, there's the blackjack and everything. Um, some, of this, some of the casino games, it's just strictly for fun. Um, depending on where you live and depending on, you know, the laws, some of the casino games, you could actually play, you know, um, play a slot machine, just like you're in, you know, in Las Vegas or in Atlantic City or in a casino, I should say, because there's more, more gambling allowed elsewhere than those places now. But, um, you know, or, or back when the online poker craze was big before government kind of stepped in and kind of started limited things. You could play a casino, you know, online casino poker, you know, po poker, whether it be five card draw or some some sort of po variant of poker online for for real money and stuff. But those are all fall into the genre of casino games. And the next genre is kind of your puzzle games and these games, the you know, unlike action games where it's all reactive, I'll, you know, there may be some react, you know, some quick reaction name to it but your puzzle games as i say you're you're looking to solve some sort of puzzle it could be doing a simple jigsaw puzzle it could be doing a puzzle where you're um kind of the classic tetris where you've got the different pieces falling in and solving the puzzle that way it could be some of the ones where you have to look and watch for pa certain patterns and stuff and matching patterns and colors and different things um there's a whole big huge genre um, you know, the Candy Crush and all the clones of the different things that came from Candy Crush that um, that are essentially puzzle games that have different different styles and elements to them, but they're still the basic puzzle game. The, the end goal of those games is to solve a puzzle. So your next um, type of games is your RPGs, and these are um, these are typical games that kind of originate from the tradition of the the you know the tradition of the um, Dungeons and Dragons, you know, pencil and paper fantasy role playing games where where you know where you rolled dice and you know depending on what the dice rolled um, compared against someone else's dice, um, you either had you know you either did well or you did poorly. It was kind of like you know random random like random values kind of controlled the battles but as you went through as you went through and you played played the games um you had the ability to as your characters went through you had the way you know um the ability to power up your power up your characters you know um evolve your characters give your characters more weapons as you went through and 
increase your level. And that's the same thing with the role, you know, online, um, your role playing video games. It's that same type of thing. Um, one of the things is while your RPG games typically kind of take place in a fantasy setting, it's, you know, not necessarily anymore. I mean, there's, you know, they have a lot of, um, sci you know, sci-fi settings and things like that. There's even, you know, sports settings for some of them now. Um, it, it just all depends, all depends on this, on the story you can have. Your next genre is, um, simulations and obviously, as you know, semi, as it stands, the game, um, the playing of the game, it, it could be for entertainment purposes, but it simulates some sort of activity. So um, as it shows here, the picture of the, you know, of Microsoft Flight Simulator, which was such a good simulation game um, back in back when, um, like, I don't know how the with the how, how much the newer versions used of it, but the like the Flight Simulator X and the version that was before that the the simulator was so good that they actually you know used it for some um beginning flight pilot training because the simulation was that good with it you know it was able to at least train and familiarize people before they actually you actually put them in a plane that you know was had more risk to it um but you have the character character characterization of vehicle simulations um and again this is where where racing can fall into it um Last year, when the world shut down, you had a major car racing organization um, sit there and go through and televise weekly races to sit there and keep their fans occupied during you know the pandemic of all the top drivers playing you know playing racing racing on um, simula on a simulator you know racing instead of racing on the real track racing in the simulators and, and stuff and it's you know. It was a simulate. It was well, it was a game. It was a race, but it was it was a simulation. It was that everything about it was a simulation of what the real what their real car would be able to do. So the next um, next kind of simulation is your sports and participatory um, participatory participatory simulations. I'm not even going to try to say that again. And this is where you kind of sit there, and this is where you get a lot of the um, kind of the modern sport games start falling into this category a little bit because there's aspects of it where it's kind of got that action game, action game aspect to it because you have to react. Like if you're playing football, you've got to understand, you know, what's going on, whether you're playing or playing baseball, you got to, there's a part where, where it's got that action mode to it, but then it's also got that simulation mode for um, simulation part of it too, for um, say, if, you know, you're playing, you know, like it's got the example of MLB 2K11. If you're playing MLB 2K11 and you're playing in a season mode and you're playing everything as the, you know, Tampa Bay Rays, um, well, when the Rays aren't playing, the game simulates the results based off of, you know, it uses, uses statistics and everything for all the teams and for all the ratings for all the players to determine which team is, be you know, which team was better in the simulation. One of the things that's kind of used a lot, um, you know, used a lot in real world type things, um, as well as, you know, entertainment things is um, simulations is process simulations, whether it be construction or management. Um, you know, when you sit there and you look, you have games, um, you know, classic games like SimCity, where you went through and the goal was to, what the goal was to build up, build up a city and, you know, as you built up the city, you had, you know, you had, pro you had problems of, you know, com citizens complaining about taxes being too high or, you know, not being able to get to one place or another, or just the simple thing of, okay, I want to build, build a block, you know, build a resident, a neighborhood in one area, but I don't have enough, you know, power in my, you know, pa electric system to power it. And I don't have enough don't have enough water supply to be able to supply the water to it. It, it was, it was, a, it was more of a, you know, as you built up, it had the simulation factor to it that allowed you to go through. I mean, I know versions of Sim, Sim, Sim City had where, um, as you built your game up, you had the ability to turn on natural disasters and see how your city would survive a hurricane or, you know, an earthquake or, or, uh, 
you know, tornado or an alien attack and things like that. And it was just stuff to, to add to the simulation, but it also added to the entertainment factor of it. But there are, um, when you sit there and you look, simulations could also be used for, um, used, used for serious and educational type games as well. Um, when you're sitting there and you're talking about it, like there's um, simulation, you know, simulators that sit there where going through, you put in specific factors and it will um, factor medical factors where you, where you may not want to do something with, you know, do something with a particular thing, but you want to go through and you want to simulate it. Well, they have some high powered simulators that will allow you to test something out without actually using it on some sort of animal or living creature. You know, there, there are real, real real world uses for simulations, um, process simulations and such, you know, in, uh, other than gaming. So now we come to the topic of strategy games. And the first type of strategy games are your turn-based strategy, turn-based strategy. And, you know, your strategy games have their origin um, in some of the classic board games, your classic board games like checkers or chess, you know, where, where it's a turn-based game, but each move you make within your turn is based off a strategy. Now, checkers up to a certain point has, you know, limited strategy with it. You know, um, chess has a little bit more strategy to it because of how, you know, you move your pieces and, and how the pieces interact with the, each other on the board. And then you sit there and you start getting into in more some of the board games that were the turn-based strategy games. Like you get into um, games like Risk or even um, Monopoly they have all have different strategies to them into going through um, to accomplish the goal of the game. And in going through making video games, when you sit here and you talk about um, strategy, you know, turn-based strategy games, a lot of times those, the turn-based strategy video games are very similar to your risk, to your monopoly, to your chess and checkers and, and things like that. So then you also have real-time strategy. And the difference between your turn base and your real-time strategy is turn base, everything takes a turn. As you're going through, you, 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 you take your turn, you do something, then you wait for an opponent or the computer to do something and, you know, and then you make your strategy based off what they do. Real-time strategy is both you and your opponent or opponents are are making these decisions and doing things simultaneously in, in real time. So therefore you have to, um, you have to adjust to what's going on in real time. It's not a turn by turn. You've got, you know, you've got to have a strategy going in and then adjust that strategy in real time as it goes on. So coming into um, the last big genre that we talk about is the massively multiplayer online games or your MMOs, um, you know, your MMOs or your MMO, MMO RPGs, which is your massively, massively multiplayer online um, role-playing game or your MMO F, um, FPSs, which is your massively multiplayer online first person shooters or your Massive MMMO, MMORTSs or your massively multiplayer online strategy, um, strategy game, real time strategy games. Basically, all three of the, all those types have the, the common of the MMO or massively multiplayer online, which means that you've got some sort of system where everybody, everybody's online playing this game at the same time. You know, it's, it's, um, you know, the classic example, it's sitting there, it's showing World of War, Warcraft. And there's, there's many other, um, you know, MMOs that, that fall in, fall into this category, especially now, especially even more so now because of a wider availability of faster internet and a wider availability of even people with mobile devices to be able to get in and, and start doing things that they, you used to only be able to do on a computer. Um, and, you know, basically the biggest thing about this category or this genre is that it's maybe a hybrid as in you have the, you know, RPG, 
first person shooter, you know, your shooter or your, your real time strategy game. But instead of it being played locally or be play, being played kind of with a direct connection with maybe one or two people, this is played with massive, massive amounts of people, you know, online. And again, a lot of games, you know, a lot like as things with the ability to do things on the internet evolves and, and access to, to faster internet comes through, you're able to sit there and be able to have more complex games like this. Um, one of the downfalls of some of these games is as you, when you sit there and you have these massive, massive multiplayer online systems is you have to have some sort of policing of players. Because when you open up any kind of massively multiplayer, massive multi-person thing online, you will find that most of the people behave, but you have people that are in the system that choose not to behave. And you have to kind of sit there and, and um, as a game developer, you need to, and a lot of that is because when you're sitting there and you're looking, um, that massive multiplayer online mode promotes anonymity, just like, you know, any other kind of massive multi-person online system does. You know, when you sit there and you look on Twitter, they talk about the Twitter trolls. Well, you can have the same thing in a um, MMO. You can have the people that go on it just because they want to be trolls. They want to, they're going on purposely to be rude and insult people. You know, the same, it's any with anything online type thing like that. Those are but that's one of the challenges you have in developing that type of game is how do you, how do you handle it? How do you com combat it? How do you, you know, you know, do you sit there and, and part of it, you design, design the ability for people, people within your company or um, outsource to people to be able to sit there and work as moderators, or do you just sit there and have, you know, specific, um, filters within it that that monitor for certain activities and when they happen disconnect the person you know there's there's different things that can happen so um real quick kind of going back so as you saw when we went through the genres you see um we talked about you know we had the massive multiplayer online genre and within that you were able to sit there and incorporate three other genres that we talked about earlier, the, the real-time strategy genre, the, the um, role-playing game genre, the, um, the, why am I drawing a blank? And the first-person shooter genre. You can have, you know, those are, those are kind of your hybrid, hybrid genres. Um, there's a lot of times where when you're sitting there and you start playing a game and you start sitting there and you start playing a game for, you know, the first five minutes and you're kind of like, if you're, okay, I shouldn't say if you're like me, you're thinking about towards this game. Sometimes I think towards, towards this class and things we discuss, but a lot of times it's just, you know, depending on the game I'm playing, it's, I want to take my head off and just be entertained. You know, I don't want to think I want to be entertained and just get away from having to think. But when you sit there and you kind of start looking analytically at games as, as, um, as we get going more, and especially after we get out of this first section, we'll be start looking, getting into the section where we, where what the assignments will be, okay, play this type of game and analyze it for this. Um, when you start going through and you start thinking about the genres of games, there's games that when you first start off, you can sit there and say, oh, well, that's just, you know, the goal of that game is, is strictly entertainment. But then as you sit there and you start going through and you may realize that, wait a minute, this has got this under arching theme about, you know, combating, you know, combating um, this specific evil in the world, you know, whether it be racism, whether it be, um, you know, whether it be, um, or whether it be, some, you know, a good, instead of combating racism, promoting inclusion to, you know, where, where everybody's involved. Um, it's entertainment, but it's got a, but it's also got a goal or a purpose behind it. It's got that, um, trying to think of the, the words that, it's, it's meant to be educational. It can sit there and be educational and, and but also um, 
develop your consciousness about an I issue and maybe in incorporate change. Um, when you're sitting there and you're talking, you're playing a game and you start playing, playing, you know, a simple action game, but then the action game gets to a point to where you're sitting there and you, you know, you go through and you work your way up to a door. And the only way to do only way to get through that door is to solve a puzzle. Now you've gone from being, being part of an action game to a puzzle game. And this is where kind of when you, when we sit there and we talk about these topics, um, especially genres and goals, it's good to know them. But a lot of times when you're working in game design and, and when you're working in, you know, um, working in building games and stuff like that, whether it be you, whether it be working as a team, um, you know, whoever is coming up with the concept or the idea, idea behind it, they may have a main goal. But as you go walking through, you may have a main goal, but then have um, a couple sub goals that fit within there that, that you know, the over, overarching goal may be entertainment, but you may want to raise consciousness about something. The over goal, overarching goal may be, may be entertainment, but you want to educate, educate, someone, educate someone about a particular topic or, you know, about something. You know, and these are things that, and the reason I'm kind of talking this way is when we get to our final project, one of the first things, your, your final project, if I haven't meant, I, I'm not sure if I've mentioned what it is, but and we'll, I'll kind of, as we get a little bit further along, I'll, I'll, I'll open it up so that you can, you can kind of see everything. But basically what you're going to be doing is creating kind of a high level design document that you're going to be presenting to the owner of a game company, which is me. Um, and your document is basically pitching your game idea to me in, in this, um, you know, no more than like, um, I think I say no more than 10 page design document that covers a list of topics. Because as the person who is the owner of the company, who's going to write the check for you to be able to go out and build this game, these are all the things that I wanna know to sit there to make my decision off. So one of the things that goes into a highlight into a, that type of design document is, is a description of, you know, okay, here's the, here's what the goal, here's, here's what the goal of the game is. Here's what the goal or goals of the game is. Here's the genre or genres the game falls under, because those are the two big things that as I sit, because as the person who's sitting there and saying, okay, well, yes or no, I'm going to fund it. If you sit there and say, my goal is, um, my goal is entertainment and I'm gonna make it as an MMO. And then you're pitching me the latest, greatest football game. I'm gonna, okay, I can see the entertainment part, but where's the other part of that genre? Because, because I don't see just straight MMO as a baseball game. I see baseball falling as, as you know, maybe a multiplayer online simulation type thing where, you know, you know, or strategy thing, you know, type things like that. And that's, that's kind of why the understanding all the different types of genres and how they meld together um, is key towards going through and towards where we're going with this class, which is going through and learning all the stuff that goes into um, game development and game design, if, if that makes sense. And if I keep looking over to the left. I set up my Zoom tonight where like everybody's over here on this computer. So instead of seeing you in front of me, now I see you all up to the side of me. <laughs> that's also where I have my book and I kind of look, make sure that um, category, categorizing things sometimes because sometimes you understand a type of game and, and you're, you miss a key point that, you know, makes it a little bit harder. So kind of going through, obviously the summary of this chapter was it talked all about goals. It talked about genres. And then um, as you read the chapter on the very last page of the chapter, which is 83, it has the, which is the same case for all the chapters. It's always got like this little um, paragraph or page long element game element. And this one kind of talks about the significance of goals and genres and pretty much in the book, it goes through and, um, kind of covers what what I what I've been saying is the biggest thing is when you understand you know the goal um you know sitting there understanding the platform that you're looking the main platform that you're looking to design for which is basically what we were talking about last week um and then understanding your goal and the genre that you're going to target um 
those things are are kind of the three key things that you have to understand before you can kind of start moving forward through the other things that we go through because um understanding a platform can affect um your goal or your genre if you're sitting there and you're looking to be you know um the classic example um of you know classic in indie developer mobile developer and it's kind of, it's aged a little bit because of how things went with it but you know a while back there was a game um vi you know mobile video game flappy birds which was a simple concept matter of fact i've had um i don't know if i did it this last i forget if i did it this last semester but in the video game programming class i've taught um in some of the times in, in working with the 2d we've we've created flappy birds i think this this year we created more of a more of an angry birds type thing or or upset birds because they weren't quite angry yet but they were just upset um but the point is is flappy birds like it was a game that you know it was very simple in concept it had you know it had its goals and genres and it was the platform you know the goal of the game was strictly entertainment and and you know the genre genre of platform fit perfect for the platform that the guy designed it for with which was mobile but the reason it was such a huge thing was it was a game that that it was very very addicting to play if you know you, you always wanted to try to you know just try to get through one more um section but the other thing about it was he also the 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 creator of the game leveraged you know in-game advertising and because so many people became at, at, you know addicted to it well every time you lost you had to sit there and watch another ad which meant more ad revenue for him and i think you know when the game finally got pulled you know despite you know um there was other reasons behind some of the things were with the with the developer but when he pulled the game from the market um I think the, the the rumors were that he was making you know upwards to six figures. Um, I forget if it was a week or a day off the ad revenue from that game, and that's kind of where why understanding the the platform, understanding the goal and the genre, and then as we move forward, developing on that. That's why it's important because you may have some higher purpose of oh I'm an artist and I just do this. For, but frankly, you still gotta you still gotta put you still gotta pay, you know keep a roof over your head. You still gotta you still have bills to pay. You still gotta you know you still have to eat. So therefore, at some point in this whole analysis, you're gonna have to sit there and you know decide. Okay, with all these things together, will this be something that I can bring to market and that I can sell, or that if if it's something that I can't bring to the market and sell, is it something that people are gonna be interested in enough that that they're gonna get download it free? And deal with you know a constant constant barrage of advertisements for other other products and you know possibly other games, and those are kind of all the things that we we will talk as we get going further along. So kind of um, going back, one of the discussion questions um that's at the end of the chapter that talks it talks about um then at the end of the chapter it talks about is kind of brings up the esrb and their ratings and i'm going to okay where's my powerpoint to be able to end the show and just to real quick So just to bring up the ESRB rating ratings to so to sit there in case you haven't seen them. So as you see, um, the basic ESRB ratings are everyone, everyone 10 and over, teen, mature, adults only, and then rating pending, which means it's it hasn't been assigned a rating. So one of the one of the controversies um, surrounding the the MMO genre is the esrb with a lot of the um a lot of the mmo genres has been assigning it to teen um by default to assigning it to teen and when you sit there and you look at the ratings category the general description of t or t for teen is um 
The content is general suited, suitable, generally suitable for ages 13 and up, may contain violence, suggestive themes, crude humor, minimal blood, simulated gambling, and or infrequent use of strong language. So when you think of some of the MMOs that are out there, um, the reason kind of it, it, it's, it, you could create an MMO that is designed for, you know, to educate little kids about math. But because of the fact that it's this massive multiplayer and it's, it's online, um, if there's any kind of, in, in taking advantage of the online thing, if there's any kind of chat functionality within it, um, it kind of, this is where the ESRB is sitting there and saying um, so much about why, why they've been defaulting these to a rating of teen is because when you read the description of um, teen, you know, it's generally suitable for 13 and up, may contain violent, suggestive themes. Your game could have none of this in it. But when you open up the, the interactivity of possible chat features or possible being able to talk with each other online or both, you run the risk of, regardless of who the game is targeted for, you run the risk of people that are outside that target coming on and taking advantage of the chat features, taking advantage of the talking to each other features um, to talk about and discuss topics that are not, you know, that are not suitable for everyone, which everyone is, you know, the, con the definition for that is generally, it, it, content is generally suitable for all ages, may contain minimal cartoon, oh, I hit my mouse getting, Minimal cartoon fantasy or mild violence and infrequent use of mild language. So, you know, you're talking, you're, I mean, very simple stuff, you know, and you're going to have a game that everything about the game fits here, but because you made it an MMO, it's going to get this rating from the ESRB. So that kind of makes sense that, that, you know, when you're sitting here and talking about the genres versus the rate, you know, with the ratings war. kind of looking and I'm seeing everybody kind of like nodding and they're everybody getting that look like they're tired of hearing me talk and so I, obviously as you sit there and you look um I recommend um I, I just went to Bing straight from my of course So um, when you sit there and you look, like I said, in talking about the ESRB, the ESRB will kind of get mentioned as we start talking in different to different topics about what the games and everything. But watching this video um, on the story of the ESRB, it's like I said, it's it's a very interesting. Again, it's um, this one's a little bit longer. It's a, and I'm not going to put it on now. Um, it's a little bit longer. It's a 30 minute video, but like I said, it's, it's, it gives the history of the ESRB, how it was founded and, and ESRB is still to this day. Um, if we go back since we were on their page, um, if you look about, you know, here's what, here's why, why they're about. And when you look at the history of the ESRB, the ESRB was, is not a government run agent agency. It is a, um, it is a board, you know, regulated by, um, regulated by the industry because, uh, you know, in reaction to the government coming in and threatening to, um, basically saying, if you don't rate yourself, we're going to rate, rate you because of things. And that's kind of where the, this, um, this history goes into it. It's, it's very fascinating. Um, when it talks about the, the Senate hearings and about how essentially the different game manufacturers um, turned on each other at the at the here at the hearings and sitting there and talking, especially um, one of the games that really, really kind of led to that was the the Mortal Kombat. And you had the different versions, if I remember right, you had in the, um, the all versions, like all the base versions of everything had um, were pretty much the same. Um, 
you know, pretty much the same level of violence and stuff like that. But it was the Sega version, I believe, that had the um, the special cheat code or the bl the blood code that made Mortal Kombat, you know, that just stepped it up even more where you had the, you know, where you had to finish them. And instead of just, you know, some simple graphic it had where you were ripping hearts out and, and things like that. And that's kind of was kind of the last straw that draw everything into it. And, and you'll see in that video, in this video, it talks about how kind of all the other manufacturers kind of turned on Sega at, at these hearings and stuff like that. And Sega kind of, they did a good job defending themselves, but it's just a sub story of the, of the um, history behind the ESRB that, that is very fascinating. If you're interested in, again, it's a half hour long, but it's a very good, very well done documentary talking about the history of it. So I promise as we get out of this first section, next week is kind of the last week of the first section. Um, we'll start getting talking into more specific examples and, and things like that. And we'll be going a little, not that you're probably complaining about us getting done early, but um, we are done with like, you know, the topics for the night. So like I said, um, this week, you've got a discussion an assignment and a quiz and pretty much for most of the weeks, this is way it's going to, this, this will be what it is, um, what you have on it. Your discussion talks about strategy games and um, basically you're discussing scenarios that are not related to the military that could fall into the strategy type of games. And then the assignment is you're going to basically create um, a document. Again, it's going to be one paper, one, you know, one, one page at most, at most two. I'm not looking for a big dissertation. I'm just looking for a way, way, something a little bit bigger than a discussion post to expand your ideas of where we're sitting here talking about um, non-entertainment game goals and choosing five, you know, taking five genres in this chapter and um, how, how those genres may be, might be a match for the, for the, um, non-entertainment game goals and and kind of going through and talking about also um you know thinking of something that in the concept of goals you know when you sit there um a goal that may not have been mentioned in a chapter that that inspired you to create a game basically your your just your your paper is going to be something kind of it's going to be your thoughts on you know the different goals but essentially also what might what would be a um I was going to say, yeah, somebody was saying for the discussion says the only strat strategy st sessions they can think of didn't involve military or simulation strategy. Um, mix setting kind of fits for that, but there are, um, I brought up a board game that is kind of a, that is, falls in the strategy category that is not military, um, not military based and it's not chess or checkers, but in talking about it, there was a board game that involves money and hotels and houses that um, I discussed that kind of falls in. Yeah, there's, there's, yeah, there's lots of, lots of strategy games that don't involve, um, that don't involve military things like that. There's, there's strategy games. Um, I was going to say Age of Empires, but no, that involves military strategy. There's, there are strategy games that in, involve um, strategy that is more business related or things like that. Um, other than that, if there are any other looking for other questions, um, I have one actually. Okay. I, um, about video game genres, um, I listened to, um, a podcast. I talked about it a while ago, but they were talking about how the genres for games are very fluid. Like it's kind of hard to like pinpoint one thing to like one game at, especially in this day of age, like. You know, you have your racing games, you have your shooting games, but when it comes to like games where it's like, oh, here's some puzzles, and also here's a bunch of shooting data you do, here's like a like a bunch of driving sections and all that, and it gets to like one of the biggest examples I can think of is character action, where it's like a character built game, but it's also like an action game, but action also falls on the racing and shooting, so it's just like, what's like, what would you say your stance is on like? just how genres work in video games because it seems very like confusing to pinpoint one genre to like 
a game is it just like is there like a system where it's like here's like the set genres and there's like sub genres underneath and it kind of goes like that or how would you say that that's pretty much that's pretty much how um like when you sit there and you look back at the games that were around then that was um like the again this book was written you know close to 10 years ago so we're sitting there and we're talking you know if you're thinking back to games 10 years ago that was when this that the, the whole hybrid genre type thing started working um if you look most games that kind of fall and fall under that they're going to have some some main genre that they kind of kind of um fall under but they're then they'll definitely have elements of other genres like like you know um any of your any of your sports games that are out today they could easily fall just simply as an action game because you're playing it you know like especially like um you know, boxing, um, you know, like it shows in, showed in the, the games, it showed the fighting game, the um, UFC game. There's an aspect of the newer versions of UFC where it is all action. It's, it's, you know, you're, you're, you're fighting and you're, you're reacting to what your opponent does, but there's also, um, there's also a strategy behind those, the newer versions of the US, UFC games, because um, when you're not fighting, you have different training things you do. And based off that, based off the trainings you do, you get um, you get stronger in specific areas of how you fight. Um, you know, even in the designing of a character, um, going through choosing what type of fighter your fighter is going to be. There's the, you know there's the there's a, there's a simulation aspect to it as well because there's you know simulations of other fights going on as you're you're going through, and that's just kind of that's a a main thing that falls under under the action sport, but. You've heard me talk about simulations going on. You've heard me talk about strategies going on. You even have, you know, um, the creativity aspect of it because a lot of the a lot of the games like like that have where you can design, um, create your own fighter, and you can go through and they they to, within within limits they allow you to be able to be creative in how you create you know the look of your fighter, you know, naming it, what the style of fighting it does, and, and things like that. So. Yeah, that that's one of the things that we, with genres, you're going you're always you're always going to have some main overarching genre, but a lot of times it's going to have meet a lot of these different different genres. You're going to have where you're going to have hybrid hybrid goals. You're going to have different things to it, and that's kind of that's in understanding what the main genres are it, it, it helps to understand okay yeah i see where this is that see that where this game is this main genre where, where where this is the main goal of the game but within that within reaching that main overarching goal within that main overarching style i also see that it applies to you know where where the goal kind of switches up at this one point you know um you know having played um uncharted 4 Uncharted 4 can fall under a lot of things because there's, you know, it's definitely got its action parts to it, but it's also got it, you know, it's also got it, um, you know, it's also got where you've got to, um, it's an adventure type thing, but it's also got at times where you've got to employ strategy to be able to get to different things and stuff like that. There's, there's a lot of things with it. And um, you'll find as more, comp the more complex the game gets, these simple ideas kind of make a little bit harder to capture in one one specific idea you'll sit there and you know where where like in defining it and you know a lot of times when you sit there and you come up with an idea of a game instead of sitting there and saying well this game falls into the into the action hybrid it's a, it's you know you know it's you know it's an hybrid it's an action adventure game or it's you know a, a um, action simulation game and things like that that's kind of it could be um, it could be confusing, but it's kind of these are just like like base things that as you go through and you develop the game, these are very these aren't detail necessarily detail minute gameplay oriented ideas. These are overarching um, looking down on it from fifty thousand feet. You know, um, stuff that you put on a box you know, on the box, the game comes in, if you are buying physical media anymore, you know, or in the picture that comes with the download to, to sit there, to, to get your eye to go to it first. You know, if you're a fan, if you're a fan of, of, you know, RPGs, 
having a new game as an R that's classified as an RPG may get you to look at it, look into it more deep, deep, deeper and dig deeper into the elements of the game. So remember, these are kind of like the foundational things. And a lot of times foundational things are those big, broad um, things that like you can build upon from, from there. They're not the, the small minute details that, that you don't want to build upon, if that makes sense. Yeah, I see what you're saying. It was interesting yeah. when you when you um, said fighting games and then uh, talked about like the UFC games and things like that. Because when I think of fighting games, I usually think of like Street Fighter and stuff. But it just shows how broad the genre can be. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> it's like so, if I haven't already said, you'll notice whenever I go to my personal games experience, nine times out of ten, those games are going to be some sort of sporting game, just because that's that's yeah. where you know that's the type I go on go under. Yeah. But then, I, um, but then again, I'm also I'm also a huge wrestling fan. So there's a YouTube channel mm -hmm. that's a bunch of wrestlers playing video video games all the time. That you know you get to see them also playing against each other in some of the other games and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. even when you talk about M MMO games, um, the the big latest greatest big game out there to play right now is Among Us. And when you sit there and you look, um, that could fall kind of under that MMO. It's although it's not massively multiplayer, it's limited by a bunch of people, limited to a certain amount of people to play, but still it's got that online aspect to it. But um, there's a bunch, you know, it's a it's a puzzle game, it's a strategy game, it's kind of an adventure game, you know, different things like that. Yeah, um, you can even very interesting, that. very interesting fact I found out about um about Among Us. Like I, if any of you have played it or seen it, um, that was created by a development team of three people and it still is to this day um like i don't know if they've grown but last i heard it was development team of three people which is why like um releases seem to come out so slow because they have you know when you're sitting here you've got three people you know especially around the holidays if one of them goes on a vacation well now you've only got two people to work on and address issues but um you don't have to be a big large company to have a successful game like I said, I know, I know, I know for a fact of a former SPC student that has, I don't know how successful he is, but he does, he did have a couple games that got launched out to, um, I know at least the Wii U and he was trying to get, he was working, um, I connected him with, connected him with somebody I know at Xbox, um, with Microsoft to see about getting his games on, um, you know, the Xbox platforms at the time. Oh, nice. And, you know, and he started with learning, you know, learning all the stuff at Unity and uh, learning all the stuff at SPC and then just taking taking it from there. I do know, um, I'm pretty sure Undertale was, um, I, I don't know exactly if there was a development team around Undertale, but I know um, it was um, a pretty small team, if not just one person that was doing it for RPG Maker. Yeah. There's, um, there's some, like when you sit there and you look, um, speaking of going through and looking for if you're if you're into being more de, more of a developer or the design or even sometimes um or even sometimes like um i'm trying to think even even from the design aspect um there's some youtube channels out there that are basically the develop this the single person who created the games that when you sit there and you look and like um you know the guy person who wrote it when you sit there and you, you you know you realize you play this game and you're like wow this game is like really cool and you find out that it was created by a single person like everything in that game was done you know it, it's 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 amazing like there's a, um i want to say thomas brush but it may be thomas bro like b-r-u-h he's a guy that's got um he's got a he's got one big game out and i think he's he's in the process of releasing a second that when you look at the games he's created, they're phenomenal. And it's just him, you know, and there's, um, there's even some YouTube channels where you sit there and you look and you see, um, they'll host, they call them, um, if you're into development, they host development game jams where, where, um, a single developer or groups, group of developers get together, um, get together to basically you have an overarching topic and you spend a week creating a game or even a weekend creating a game game kind of like the same thing that, that programmers will have the same type of thing, but instead of creating a video game, you'll create a program to solve a problem. Something I was yes. thinking about too with um, the fighting games, uh, just a quick point. Um, the um, 
like fighting games like Street Fighter and stuff, and ones that like require like footsies and a lot of teching and stuff, it's like you could almost even say it's kind of like a not like as big, but like kind of like an RT RTS, considering you have to think of these like on the fly or else you're going to get punished for it. Yeah, de depending on the fighting game, yeah, that definitely sits there. And I'm sitting there and I'm looking, looking, uh, looking at, in the chat, and and I'm going to sit there and say, remember, this is part of the discussion post for this week. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that that the 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 point that I'm sitting there and seeing the discussion about it is this is a good th this is a good example of of how you can go through and have you know, a discussion about, I'm um, you know, just kind of, if you look in the chat, it sits there and, and Jarrett and Carissa are, are discussing, you know, the one example talking about a non-military versus a military game. And, you know, there may be a military aspect, but the main, main overarching goal of the game is, you know, talking po pol more political strategy and then military. And that's, that's some, that's the whole reason that that's the discussion post out there is it's meant to encourage this kind of discussion about the topic because, as you get thinking about this more, you'll find yourself um, when you're playing a certain game kind of thinking, okay, well, where does this fit into this and where does it go? And that's kind of why I want, like, I haven't had any of the assignment, assignments yet, but once we get past chapter four and we start getting into um, the, the creating the content and the stuff that goes into the content that makes up these things, because um, next week we talk about, we talk about who plays the games, um, you know, and who the targets are for it. But when you go through, um, as we get going into talking about the different types of content and stuff, that's where we'll sit there and start looking and start looking into playing. Okay, now we've got this foundation, but start sitting there and, and analyzing specific, you know, types of games to sit there and see how they fall into these categories. You know, trust me, you you will have the times where you know you're sitting there and you know, playing you're, you're playing a game and you know I really am doing schoolwork. I actually had one person who took the class when I gave the first assignment and said, you know, play this game for three or four hours. He went, oh, I don't play games that long. And everybody else looked at him strangely, but. All right. Um, so if there's no more questions, again, we've got the discussion, the assignment out there this week, and then the quiz. Um, I sent out the breakdown of kind of where I saw the big, um, the questions that, got, that were answered the most wrong from the week one quiz, I hope that made sense. And kind of um, sometimes it was like, I, the, the explanation was, look at this section of the chapter, it's literally word for word from right from that part of the chapter. And then if there's a little bit more explanation, I did provide it. But um, once I get a chance to go through, look at week two, week two quiz, um, I'll you know try to provide a similar email. I have one more question. Yeah. You said our final project was to submit a design document for a video game idea, right? Yeah. Because uh, I already happen to have some video game ideas floating through my head. Can I use one of those? Why not? That's the whole point. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, because, because, it, because you, you may have the idea in your head, but what this document's going to do is this document's going to sit there and force you to break that break break down your idea into something that where you're sitting there because as we go through and we start talking about like right now we're talking about the very very core foundation of of, of with with what goes into making games um in the next like next week is the last last chapter that's kind of those foundational elements and it's kind of talking about who plays the games and why's and then we're going to start talking about the content that goes into the games then as we start talking about the content that goes into the games, you'll sit there and that'll start getting you thinking, thinking more about, okay, I have the basic idea of my game. What's the content that's going to go in there. And then when we get into the third section, we start talking about the teams. We start talking about the design team, the development team, possibly the, the sound, sound, you know, sound team. We start talking about marketing aspects. We talk about all the different roles that go into building the game and you know, between that transition between the section and second and the third section is when I'll go through and really introduce because we'll have enough stuff for you to start on it really like probably right shortly after midterm, we'll get to where we'll be able to, re I'll be able to sit there and put out there to where you can actually read more into what the final project is because you'll have a foundation to start working on it. But 
as you see, there's a lot, there's a lot of elements to it that it, it breaks down all the elements you want into it. And some of the elements are the things we've covered on there, but we haven't even scratched the surface of a lot of the elements on it. And that's why I don't have it out there yet. But if you have an idea for a game, then as we start going through, start thinking, okay, here's my idea of the game. Here's where, where does it fit within this? Where does it fit within this? Um, you know, like so far, two of the, two of the topics that are in the final paper, final project. Okay. What's your, what's your main platform and player mode that you're looking to target from, from last week? What's your, what's your, what's your, what, what are your, what are your, what's your main goal and goals um, that it fits in? What's, what's your main genre that it's going to fit in next week, next week, we're going to start talking about who plays the game. Who's your target for the, who's your target for the, for, for who's, who, who's your target for it? Who, who, if, if, this person bought the game, I would say, this is exactly who I want to buy. And then who, so based off that target, who would be the outliers of that outliers of that, who, who may be near that, but not exactly on that. Um, you know, and then we'll sit there and then we'll start talking. Then, then from there, you kind of get into, okay, now that we've got those things addressed, what's some of the, what's some of the content that's going to be in the game? Um, how are you going to market it? How are you, you know, and that's where this, that's where, that's why everything we kind of cover, cover it's it's the final project really covers everything that we cover in in, in the chapter or in the chapter in the book and in throughout the class i have one question yeah um there's a link that uh gets sent an email to us to log on to the uh zoom meeting and mm -hmm. that's the one i used tonight and it's different than the one that's posted in our, the ID number is different than the one that's posted in uh, my courses. And it didn't work actually. That's why I got here at really? day seven was because this the, one, which, on the, my, the my courses one was the one that worked, but I clicked on the one in the email first and it didn't, it was just had me in a waiting room until seven when I was like, um, this isn't right. Um, yeah, she's right. Uh, the link you sent from the email was actually the wrong link. That's that's interesting because I don't hear. So where I got that link from, here's the class meeting set up and it shows we're in progress. And literally I clicked on that and then copied and pasted it out of there. So it, I'll just, instead of doing that from now on, I will just send out this. And it's just, it's more so not everybody is logged into my courses when the class starts. And it's just, sometimes it's easier to click, click, an email, click a link straight from the email. So I'll just, if this is the one that's working, cause this should be, this should be the same exact thing that's in the, that it, I use the same meeting every week. So. Right, that's the one that works. The one in the email was the little meeting ID part was different. Oh, okay. The, num the numbers, the digits were different. Okay. That's uh, odd because like I said, I got that from, from clicking, <laughs> like literally clicking the button that took me into the, and I can't pull it up now. You know what? I'll tell you what, uh, I'll take a look at the URLs for, uh, I'll take a look at the URLs for both links in this class and see if I notice a discrepancy. Oh. Yeah. Well, the URL, cause the URL, um, like it kind of the first part's the meeting ID and the second one is second part is the meeting password um encrypted to be able to put onto a command line but if if this is the link i'll just copy and paste this one i won't copy and paste it out of zoom i just happen to have zoom open when i was sending it because i just it sent out the reminder and put the link in the email to make it easier to get to it you know one click type thing okay I'm, I'm probably just going to use one on uh, my courses. I'm not even going to worry about email. Yeah. Yeah. I'll just make sure that I'll make sure that this is the link I send out every week then. Okay. So any other questions, any other comments? All right. Well, um, have a great week or almost rest of the week. Yeah. It's only Wednesday. It's been a rough week. Um, have a great week, guys. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Yep. I'm going to play Project Brutality now.